So, uh, when you are talking about this Kubernetes, the Kubernetes excels at managing your applications, okay, and so on, right? But it does not specify or manage platform level requirements or your deployment processes, okay? So, that is what is all about your Kubernetes. So, the Kubernetes excels in uh, at managing your application. The OpenShift offers you know, powerful management tools and processes so that you'll be able to manage the platform level requirements which are available there. So that is nothing but is called as an OpenShift. So that is why we use make use of your OpenShift which is available there. So Kubernetes by default will help you to manage your applications. The platform will have some you know, uh, management tools, platform management tools and tools are available there which will help you to manage all the necessary uh, uh, platform level requirements, deployment processes, all those things can be uh, can be done, okay, and so on. Manage. Okay. So, it is an on-premise platform as a service built around Docker containers, okay, and it is orchestrated and managed by your Kubernetes on a foundation of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So, you have your Red Hat Enterprise Linux and on top of it, you install your Red Hat OpenShift which is available. So, it is an on-premise platform as a service, okay, which is built around Docker containers and your Kubernetes, orchestrated and managed by your Kubernetes, which is available. So, that is nothing but is called as an OpenShift, okay, and so on. So, this is your OpenShift architecture, okay. Uh, uh, right at the bottom, you have the, you know, uh, all the infrastructure which is available where you can install your Red Hat OpenShift, right. So, you have your physical layer, okay. Uh, you have your virtual uh, virtual servers, physical servers, virtual servers, private cloud, public cloud, and uh, managed cloud, which is available. And and then on top of it, you install Red Hat Enterprise Linux or RHEL Core OS, which is available there. And then on top, you have the Kubernetes. And then on top of it, you have all the cluster services which are available there. So when you're talking about this cluster services, cluster services are nothing but like like your automated operations, monitoring, registering, networking, router, uh, cube virtualization, okay, OLM, help. All these things are some of the cluster services which are available there. Okay, so all these three layers that is your in, uh, Red Hat or Enterprise uh, Linux layer, Kubernetes layer, and the cluster uh, service layer is nothing but is called as an OpenShift Kubernetes engine. OpenShift to Kubernetes engine which is available there, right? And on top of this cluster services, there are all the different types of services are running like platform services, application services, and your developer services. When you talk about this platform services, okay, it provides you with the service mesh, okay, CI/CD pipelines, okay, all those things are provided. So this will help you to manage your workloads. So the popular platform service will help you to manage your workloads, and then you have your application services where you are able to build cloud native applications, and then you have your developer services which helps you to improve your developer productivity which is available there. So all these services are available there. So all the all the four layers together are nothing but called as an OpenShift container a platform. The first three layers is nothing but OpenShift Kubernetes engine, okay, right? And top of it, if you have all these necessary services which are help you to manage different uh, services, then that is nothing but is called as an OpenShift container platform. And then you have a multi-cluster management. This multi-cluster management services will help you to manage your uh, no, multi-cluster, okay, multi-cluster, okay, and so on. So, this is your advanced cluster manager, which will help you to manage the configuration, manage your workloads, policies, compliance, all these things can be managed with the advanced cluster manager, which is available there. So, this is nothing but is your OpenShift architecture, right? So, the OpenShift can be deployed on to, you know, any of the infrastructures like physical servers, virtual servers, private cloud, public cloud, or to any of the managed clouds which are available there. So, we have IBM ROKS, okay, uh, Red Hat OpenShift Kubernetes service, we, okay, we have Red Hat Cloud is available there, Azure Cloud, AWS Cloud, okay, you can install on any of the managed clouds which is available there, okay, and also onto a public cloud, okay, and so on. So, the first three layers is nothing but is called as an OpenShift Kubernetes engine, and on top of it, you have all the different services are available there, platform service, application services, okay, and then you have your uh, uh, not developer productivity, okay, so developer services and so on, right. So, all these four layers are nothing but called as an OpenShift container platform, right. And top of it, we have your multi-cluster management of, uh, uh, services, which will help you to manage your cluster, okay, uh, from policies, creating a policies, uh, you know, uh, compliance issues, workloads, uh, managing the configurations, all these things are, can be managed with the help of your OpenShift Open, you know, advanced cluster manager which is available there. So this is 
nothing but is your open shift container no uh, no uh, architecture okay then so this is your open shift architecture which is similar to your open uh, no kubernetes architecture which is available here right so you have a base layer and top of it you have a service layer okay uh, right uh, and then on top of it you have a main node and the worker node you have a persistent storage registry and a routing layer which is available here, right so you have a base layer base layer is nothing but is your uh, okay uh, you have base, <coughs> base layer is nothing but is your infrastructure layer okay you have the infrastructure layer which is there so in the infrastructure layer you can host your applications on your physical server virtual servers or even onto the public and private clouds which are available there okay on top of it you have the service layer the service layer is responsible for defining your pods and access policies which are available there okay so this service layer provides you a permanent ip address <coughs> permanent ip address and a host name to the pods okay so that is nothing but is your service layer okay yesterday i have you no know, i was explaining you about this right uh, uh, right pods go down you no know, uh, Okay, has and when they wish, right? So when they come up, they have a different IP address, right? So in order to avoid that particular conflict, we need to abstract all the IP address and the host name onto a service layer. That service layer is here. Okay, over the base layer, you have the service layer. So what does the service layer contain? The service layer is responsible for defining a pods and the access policy. The service layer provides you a permanent IP address and the host name to the pods. Okay, host name to the a pod which is available there so right and so on and this will help you to connect applications together okay connect applications together and also it will help you to provide simple internal load balancing okay and also the distribution task across to the application components which are available there okay and so on okay and then on top of it you have two main nodes okay two nodes which are available there okay one is called as a main node or the master node the other one is nothing but is the worker node okay and so on so the application resides uh, uh, in the worker node okay you have the pod within the pod you can have one or more containers all those things are available there okay and so on so that is what okay so that is nothing but your worker node okay so you can have multiple worker nodes in the cluster you can have multiple worker nodes in the cluster okay and so on so the uh, worker nodes are where all your coding adventures happen Okay, all your applications are installed. Here. Okay, accessing your applications are available in that particular worker node which is there. Okay, and so on. So when you are talking about this main node, main node is responsible for managing the cluster. Main node is responsible for managing the cluster which is available there. Okay, and it takes care of the worker nodes and it takes care of the worker nodes. Okay, and so on. Right. So it contains four. Uh, uh, you know, uh, four main tasks that is authentic api authentication right data store scheduler and health and scale okay api and authentication okay so what is this api and authentication that is any administration request or any administration task goes through this api okay uh, uh, okay and then what happen is these requested are ssl encrypted okay an automatic on authenticated so that so that you are able to provide security okay to the cluster you are able to provide the security to the cluster which is available that is nothing but is your api and authentication so when you have this api okay so any administration request or task request goes through this api okay so once you receive this particular task okay request these requests are ssl encrypted and authenticated okay to ensure you provide a security to the cluster security of the provide is so, okay security of the cluster which is available right then you have the data store the data store is nothing but it helps you to store the state and information of the environment and also of the application okay that, that is hcd database right so it will help you to store the state and information related to your environment and also to the application then comes your scheduler scheduler determines the pod placement okay where you want to place your pods in which worker node you want to place your pods okay and so on right so right okay so that is what is scheduler right and then we have this health and scaling okay this will help you to monitor the health of the pods and 
and scale them based on the CPU utilization, based on the CPU utilization which is available there, okay, and so on. So if a pod fails, the main node will automatically restart the pod which is available there, okay, you restart the pod, pod which is available there, okay. Then comes your uh, a worker node, okay, then comes your worker nodes, right. So the worker node is made up of pods, okay, so which you have already defined, right, pod is the smallest unit, okay, of deployment, okay. And uh, the pod contains your uh, containers. Uh, the containers include your applications and the dependencies which are available there. Okay. So that is nothing but it's called as a worker node. Right. Then comes your registry. Registry is the place where you save your images locally in the cluster. Okay. Locally in the cluster which is available. Then you have the persistent storage. The persistent storage is well, where all your data is saved and connected to the containers. So application data, all those things are stored in your uh, persistent storage and then you have the routing layer routing layer is nothing but is the last component is the routing layer component okay so this provides you the external access to the application in the cluster from any device okay from any device which is available there, okay and you can also provide load balancing and auto route auto routing around your unhealthy pods all those things can be done with the help of your routing layer okay so that is nothing but is your open shift app. so these are the different components within your open shift container platform so you have a service layer main node worker node registry persistent storage and a routing layer so when you install your open shift okay remember that when you are installing your open shift uh, 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 right uh, so uh, Uh, internally what happens here is OpenShift, Red Hat OpenShift has an internal registry is available there, private registry is available. So that is what yesterday we tried to access that particular registry, right, uh, okay. We were able to push that particular image to that registry. So it has a private registry or OpenShift, okay, OpenShift, when you install your OpenShift, right. And also when you install your OpenShift, earlier version of OpenShift, that is earlier to version 4, okay, we can install one master node three master nodes, five master nodes, seven master nodes and so on, okay. So, okay, so that was the actual, you know, uh, actual, you know, uh, 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 actual way of installing your applications, right, uh, 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 OpenShift. But now after four, okay, it is mandatory that three master nodes are enough for, okay, whatever number of worker nodes are available within the uh, cluster, okay. So when you basically install your OpenShift cluster, the OpenShift cluster comes with, uh, three master nodes okay so you need not install you no know, five seven and so on so basically by default you install three master nodes with you install your open shift cluster which is available okay so we have already seen this right so it is a method of packing deploying managing your kubernetes application it is a method of packaging okay uh, and managing and cube uh, a kubernetes application which is available there, okay and so on uh, operators helps you to provide the repeatability of installation and upgrade. You will be able to repeatedly install and upgrade. Okay, you can provide constant health checks for every system component. You can provide over the air updates for OpenShift components. Right? Uh, okay, and so on. So, right. So that is nothing but is your. Uh, uh, okay. So that is nothing but is your. Uh, no operators which is available. So if I just share the my web. So when you're talk talking about this operators, right? So uh, right in OpenShift 4, the OpenShift 4 is built on operators, okay? Built on operators, which is available, okay? And so on. So this will help you to manage and maintain your uh, containerized application, manage your, uh, no, uh, no, manage your uh, no, OpenShift console, all those things can be done here, okay? So, right, so when you install your Red Hat OpenShift, by default, you have this cube admin as a uh, login methodology. Okay. After that, okay, what you need to do is you need to create a user. Okay, and then you need to you know, uh, you know, uh, and disable this particular cube admin because right. So right. So so that you no know, uh, no one will be able to access this cube admin. Right. So click on HTTPS. Okay, and then install, log into it. I'll just show you what are operate, what are operators here. Okay. So. 
we saw that in order to install your operators, right? So we need to go to operator hub.io, download that, right? But from Red Hat OpenShift 4, we have some, we under menu, we have something called as operator hub, okay? So this operator hub is integrated into your Red Hat OpenShift console, okay? So from here, you can install your Red Hat OpenShift, which is available there. So mm -hmm. if I want to install any of this operator here, the operations are available here. So let's take, for example, IBM, okay? Load pad for integration. Okay. So, right, I can install IBM load pad for integration, right, and so on. So, when I install, I want, okay. So, this is an operator based installation which is available here. Operators are available here, okay. I can install it. So, operator is here, okay, and so on. So, I can just go. Okay, go, go down and then install this particular operators which are available there. So you have an operator channel, okay, you have an operator channel which is available there, okay, and okay, and the supported versions which are available here, okay. So we have 5.3 and 6.1, what are the supported versions which are available there, operator channels, okay. And then when you're talking about the requirements, system requirements, okay, all those things can be you know, dealt from here itself. You can look into it and then install your operators which is available there. So if you are looking into operator versions for 5.3 channel, then Red Hat OpenShift version for 4.6 or later can be used. Okay. If you are want to version 6 dot channel 6, then operation or Red Hat OpenShift version 4.10 is needed by it. Okay, and so on. So that way you can install your operators which are available there. Okay, and so on. Right. So I told you that this Red Hat OpenShift is built on using your operators. Okay, it's implemented using your operators which are available there. Okay. So, if you come to cluster settings, right, so these are the cluster operators based on which your, you know, Red Hat OpenShift is, you know, built on to this. Update is failing. Why it is failing? Uh, cluster OpenShift. Okay, API service degraded. Okay, no issues. Okay, so that is what happens. So, cluster operators so these are all the operators which are available there okay so based on this particular operator your red hat open shift is uh, you know, uh, created so it which means that it makes much more easier for us to you know uh, update a particular component okay all those things can be done which is available there so right so you have this cluster operator details which are available there okay and so on uh, okay, so all those things can be upgraded, you know, uh, de uh, not degraded, all those things can be done. So using your cluster operators which are available there. So you can install your operators. When, when you click on installed operators, all the operators are installed here. Okay, you have these operators which are installed here which is available there. Okay, and so on. So let's take for example, if I click on this IBM WebShare automation, so these are all the APIs which are provided APIs which is available there. That is your custom resource definition which is available there. Okay. So based on this custom resource, you can create your CRs. Custom resources can be created. So if you want to create, I can just create an instance of this particular okay operand. This is nothing but it's called as an operand. I'm creating an operand. So you install an operator. Okay. Once you install an operator, you can create an operator operand from it. Operand is nothing but creating an instance. Operand is nothing but creating an instance. So you provide all the necessary configurations here. Okay. So what is the policy, license, okay, what is the data store which is needed, okay, and so on. So there are two views are available there, form view and the YAML view. You can make use of this YAML view which provides you with the additional set of uh, 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 informations where you can configure your, uh, 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 your uh, uh, CR which is available there. So you can now click install, that will help you to install this particular, what you call as your uh, APIs, okay, and so on. So already all the instances are created here, okay. So even so, this is nothing but is your install. So once you install your operator, your operator is available here. So based on the operator which you have installed, you need to install the operand. You need to install the operand. Let's take for example IBM Excel. So you have all this custom resource def, okay are available there. So based on this, you create an instance. So creating an instance is nothing but you create an operand. You create an operand which is available there. So that is nothing but it's called as an operator which is there. Okay, and so on. Okay. 
so operators in you know, open shift right uh, so same thing right we have described about operator life cycle manager right so which will help you to manage the life cycle of your operators right so okay and then you have the operator hub which is integrated into your red hat open shift consoles which will help you to store and distribute your operators to the uh, people okay uh, and deploy your applications which are available there and even your operators are available in your quay.io quay.io which is a container registry which is available there okay so it is also available there so you can also make use of that particular you know, quay.io or you can make use of red hat open shift marketplace so you go to red hat open shift marketplace and then you can you know, uh, uh, know create you can you know, uh, download your operators and install your operators from there okay and so right now so this is your operator life cycle manager okay so this is your operator life cycle manager which is available there, okay so when you install your operator okay okay when you want to install your operator you need to install your operator life cycle manager which will help you to manage the life cycle of your operators which is available there okay so what does the olm helps to do the olm will help the user to install update and manage the life cycle of your kubernetes application that is your operators it will help you to do that okay and so on okay uh, okay so that is what your operator okay will help you to do that operator life cycle manager okay and so on right so this will help you to install upgrade okay and also manage the uh, uh, your applications which are available okay which are available there which is there okay and so on so right so you have the operator manifest okay which is available in your cluster catalog and based on the cluster catalog you are able to install your applications okay and also manage your applications update your applications which are available there so if you look into this particular uh, operator okay if you look into this particular operator right so this is your operator which is available there okay and so on now, now you can inst you can click on subscription tab when you click on the subscription tab it provides you with the details okay it provides you with the details right so this will help you to manage what is the upgrade status it is up to date right and what is the approval status it is automatic and the, what is the channel channel is version 1.2 i'm using 1.2 or if i want to use the latest version i can click on the latest version and stay and then it will automatically get approved and then it will update the status of that particular thing which is available so this is how you know, uh, your operator life cycle manager will help you to manage the life cycle of your operator which is available there so the approval status are two types of approval status are available there automatic and the manual status are available there automatic it is default one okay which means that new updates will be installed as soon as they become available okay right if this manual you have to have a manually approve the installation process of your uh, upgrade status is available so this is how your the olm will you know help you to manage the life cycle of this particular uh, no, uh, operator which is available there operator which is available there. that is nothing but is your operator life cycle manager and so on so uh, the first one is your uh, uh, cluster service version okay so the cluster service version is nothing but which represents a specific version of a running operator which is okay which is a running operator that is nothing but is called as a cluster service version <laughs> then we have a catalog source a catalog source is nothing but it is the uh, right uh, uh, okay uh, it provides you the catalog or it represents a metadata okay which will help you to refer to an image which is stored in your container registry okay so it contains it is nothing but it is a, a store of metadata okay which will be referring to an image which is stored in your container registry which is available so that is nothing but is your catalog sources which is available there okay and so on so this operator hub in your open shift container platform web console okay is nothing but okay Uh, your catalog sources okay so how does your how does your open operator hub display your operators this okay these operators are provided by your catalog sources these operators are provided by your catalog sources which is available there okay mm -hmm. then we have a subscription okay 
the subscription is nothing but it is an intention to install an operator okay saying that i am going to install this particular operator so i am providing giving an intention to to install an operator okay and so on so right so that is nothing but is called as a subscription okay so what is the subscription describe the subscription describes the channel of an operator okay and so on to which i am subscribing to so that is what we were able to look into it right so that is what okay under subscription we had the channel right so we are subscribing to that particular channel okay so we it describes the channel to which an operator is subscribed to okay and and then operator okay and and, and which release you are able to install that particular okay operator so subscription is nothing but it is an intent uh, to install an operator install an operator then you have the install plan okay so uh, this install plan describes a set of resources okay uh, which which your olm will create to install or update or update your operator okay update your operator so let's take for example when i say subscription and subscription i say that i am going to in, i have an intention to install this particular operator there i say that version 1.2 is available so in order to install 1.2 version 1.2 okay uh, it, pro, it you need to provide an install plan okay what you need to install okay uh, right what are the resources you need to install okay uh, and, and or or what are the resources you need to upgrade uh, an operator which is available there so this install plan defines or describes a set of resources that your olm that is operator life cycle manager will help you to you know uh, install or upgrade your specific version of a operator which is available there okay and so on okay so this version is defined by a cluster service version okay the installs okay the version which is defined in your install plan is defined by your cluster service version which is available there okay and so on then comes your operator group okay so then comes your operator group so okay uh, uh, okay uh, so where you are uh, okay uh, uh, okay where you are able to create an operator group okay so that you will be able to you know provide multi tenant configuration okay you can provide multi tenant configuration which is available there okay and so on right so uh, right so you need to generate this particular operator create your operator group okay uh, right and these operator group are defined by the resources which are available there okay then comes your operator conditions right so you can provide a custom resource definition that is nothing but is called as an operator condition right custom resource okay is nothing but is called as an operator condition that help you to uh, help the operator to communicate the conditions to your olm okay so it will help you to communicate the state of your operator to the olm which is available there so that is nothing but is your operator condition so these are the olm resources which are available there. custom service versions catalog resource subscription install plan operator group and your operator conditions which are available there. so if you just go to this particular console okay you will be able to view that particular uh, okay see so you have an installed version which is available there so a csv custom service version which is there okay uh, right uh, so that is a custom service version right uh, right and then you have the catalog source right and then you have the install plan okay so all this so when you want to install your operator you need to follow all this then you have the subscription you have the channels okay all those things are available here, okay and so on so this is your catalog source from which catalog the source you are getting this particular operator you are getting that operator from their ibm operator catalog okay the operator catalog provides you with the okay this particular that is your ibm web sphere automation operator is provided with this and you have this install plan so this install plan contains all the necessary components configuration which needs to be set up okay which is available there status is complete okay namespace okay what are the labels okay what are the components is you know uh, config components which creates right so all this necessary operations are provided with the uh, with your install plan okay and so on okay so all these things are created with, uh, when you you know when you create your install plan which is available there okay and so on. that is nothing but is your install plans which are available there. okay so that is your okay uh, that is your olm resources which are available okay so these are some of the other open shift enhancement to the kubernetes which are available there. so you have your uh, you know uh, 
uh, or SDN, that is your uh, or software defined networking, monitoring and log aggregation, you have routing and then you have your authentications which are available. Okay. So SDN is nothing but you know, a software defined network. right? So this OpenShift container platform uses your software defined networking so that you are able to provide a unified cluster network. Okay. Uh, so that you will be able to communicate with the pods across your OpenShift container platform, okay, cluster which is available, okay, and so on. So this pod network is established and maintained by your OpenShift SDN, software defined networking, okay, and so on, right? Uh, all right, so this is nothing but software. So you can monitor and log aggregation. So your monitoring and log, okay, logging is integrated with your OpenShift, you know, uh, 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 platform right uh, routing is there okay you have can also provide in authentication which is available so we'll be looking into it, these things in uh, detail in the later slides which is available right so when you install your uh, application that is when you install a red hat open shift right so you uh, 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 it provides you the cluster id it provides you with the uh, cluster url and also it provides you with the password which is available okay So, right, so this is, okay. So, uh, so after installing your OpenShift container platform, okay, how to access the OpenShift web console, right? So it provides you the URL of your OpenShift web console, right? It provides you with the user ID and the password. You can make use of the, okay, a user uh, web URL and the user ID and password, which is available there, okay? So this cube admin, <coughs> this cube admin is the, you know, default user and the password is also provided there, right? So you can you know, uh, access the Red Hat OpenShift console, then you can create a user and then disable the access of the default user ID which is available there, okay, which is there, okay, so that can be done. So this is how you can access your web, uh, no, OpenShift web console which is available there, okay, and so on, right? So this is your uh, dashboard. So in order to view your cluster, cluster information, you need to go to home dashboard and overview okay so uh, right so if i once again go to the google to that system right so you have all the menus are available there so this is your web console right you have all the menus are available here okay so you have two perspectives are available here okay on top you have your administrative perspective and a developer perspective is available here, okay so you can change, if you are a developer, you can go to the developer perspective, which is available there. So here you have all the necessary, uh, 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 okay, uh, right? You have topologies, right, which helps you to provide all your application topologies which are available there, okay, right, and so on. So it provides you all the application topology, okay, monitoring stuff, okay, the monitoring dashboard, you'll be able to view it, okay. And then you can build your uh, no, build configs. You can create your build configs. You can create your pipelines. If you want to you know, uh, install your Helm charts, all your Helm releases will be available here. Okay, so you can also install your chart. Okay, you can create a project and create a uh, okay create a project which is available there, right? And all those things can be done with the help of your uh, your developer perspective, right? The same way we have your administrative perspective where you are able to provide this entity to provide you with the administrative uh, no, console which is available there. So you have your home menu. So this is your dashboard, okay, overview of your Red Hat OpenShift console which is available there, right? So it provides you the details, right? So if you click on the view settings, you can more view it, okay? It provides you the cluster IP address. So this is a cluster IP address, okay? This is a cluster ID, okay, and so on. And it, then it provides you with the status. It provides you with the status. What is the, the status of the cluster? What is the status of your control pin? And also the, what is the status of your operators? So the operator says that this four, uh, no, four operators are at degraded state. You can just click on this, right? So uh, these are the four operators which are at degraded state. So authentication, group control manager, manage config, and open shift over, okay, which is available there, right? So, right, and so on. So it provides you all the necessary, you know, information about the clusters which are available there, right? So you have the cluster inventory, you have the cluster inventory tool, 
right with which there are around three nodes are available there okay so there are around three nodes which has been created right and then there are around 334 pods which has been created and in that 334 pods around 10 pods are failing 10 pods are failing or it will provide crash loot back off which is available there right okay and so on and then it is and around seven pods are terminating or in pending state okay and you have one storage class and 17 pvcs which is available there okay pvc is persistent volume claim the same way it provides you with a cluster utilization like cpu memory and file system it helps you to provide it okay cluster is available the file system okay which is available there okay so it uh, provides you with that so this is nothing but is your okay a home okay a home okay and so on so overview of home in the same way you have all the menu options are available there so operators we saw under workload we have you no know, different uh, no workloads are available there so you can create a pod you can create your deployments you can create a deployment configs okay you can create a stateful sets okay which is available there okay <coughs> you can create secrets you can create your config maps which is available there okay and so on okay so stateful sets is nothing but it is a uh, a, a, it is a resources which will help you to manage your stateful applications in your Kubernetes. Okay, and so on. It will help you to manage your uh, uh, no, stateful applications in your in Kubernetes is available. There, okay, and so on. Then you can create your cron jobs. Okay, uh, right. So you can create your cron jobs. You can create your jobs which are available there. Okay, so all those things can be you know, done. Okay, under your workloads which are available. There. Okay, so. Cron jobs are nothing but where you can create your jobs on a repeating schedule. Okay, on a repeating schedule, it uh, can be created. Jobs are nothing but where you can create your task. Okay, uh, okay, uh, create your jobs. Okay, uh, on a particular schedule. Okay, it will help you to run your jobs. Okay, and then we have something called as daemon sets. Okay, so what is a daemon set? Okay, now when you create a, an application, okay, so when you create an application, what happens is you create a pod. Okay. So that pod is available in a particular, uh, okay, in a particular pod which is there, okay, and so on, okay. So uh, right, so that is what uh, that is what your you no, know, that is what your mechanism is all about, okay, uh, okay, and so on. So when you are creating a daemon set, okay, when you are creating your application has a daemon set, watch what happens is it creates a pod, and then each worker node will have a pod, okay okay within that particular cluster within the entire cluster that is nothing but is called as a daemon set let's take for example your monitoring tool okay so when you want to monitor okay you want to monitor the all the systems which are available all the nodes which are available within the cluster okay so you want to install this monitoring tool in each and every worker node okay when you say deploy a config file deploy dot yaml file when you are uh, deploy it what happens is the Kubernetes or Red Hat OpenShift will deploy a pod, pod to a particular uh, uh, worker node, onto a particular worker node. Okay, but what I want to do is, okay, but what I want to do, what I want you to do, what I want to do is, I want to deploy this application monitoring tool on each of the worker nodes which are available there, so that the each of the worker node will be monitored. Okay, and so on. So what I can do is. I can create that as a daemon set. So when I create that as a daemon set, okay, it will help you to create that particular pod to the nodes which are available in each of the nodes. So which means that the pods will run each of the nodes which is there, okay, and so on. So, so daemon set will help you to manage these groups of replicated pods, groups of replicated pods which are created, okay, and so on. So usually what happened is your monitoring tool okay your logging tool or you know, install has a daemon sets which are available there okay then we have the replica set your replica set you know you know you can create a replica of your applications which is available there so let's take for example right i have this uh, okay uh, i have some uh, okay let's take for example elastic operator okay so you have only one pod which is available there you can you know increase that replication which is available there so if you click on pods right so right so all these pods are running so it is the pod is running in your master 2 environment okay master 2 right 
so on master to node it is running okay so you can increase that particular okay part from 1 to 3 okay uh, right right and which is available so if you click on this yaml file okay You will find the LAML file for that particular pod. In that, you have something called as replication. You can no, uh, no, you can no select that replication, right? Uh, 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 okay, and then increase that replication for that particular pod which is available. There, okay, so that can also be done. Okay, so that can also be done which is available. There. I don't know why it's taking such a long time. I'll, I'll show you on this. So the, you can create your replication controllers. Okay, so you can create your replication controllers which are available. There. So you have you can create if you want to create two replicas, you can create a two replicas which is available. Okay, at any point of given point of time, this particular application will create. Uh, okay, app, oh, hello OpenShift have, to have two replicas. Okay, which is available. There. So it will control the replication which is available. There. So that can be done here. Okay, and so on. Then we have horizontal pod auto scalers. Horizontal pod auto scale. Okay. So this horizontal pod auto scaler, okay. So you need to understand your Kubernetes auto scaling options, right? So there are two types of auto scaling options which are available there. Okay, one is horizontal scaling, another one is called as a vertical scaling. Okay, so uh, right, so these are the two types of uh, no, auto scale, uh, two uh, auto scaling features which are available there. Okay, and so on. So which means that you are able to you know, scale your uh, no pods either horizontally or either vertically which is available there okay and so on that can be done okay so uh, right uh, we have your uh, horizontal and a vertical scaling so when you're talking about this horizontal scaling and a vertical scaling uh, just a second So now, uh, okay. So you have two types of scaling. Okay, one is called as a horizontal scaling. Okay, and then you have a vertical scaling. Okay. So horizontal scaling is nothing but it is related to pods. Okay. Vertical scaling is nothing but it is related to your nodes. Okay, when you talk about horizontal scaling, it is related to your pods. Okay, we have one uh, question on this. Okay, remember this, and the vertical scaling is related to your nodes. Okay, so what does this horizontal scaling does? Horizontal scaling will will add or remove your pods. Okay, add or remove your pods. Okay, so what it does is it will help you to. Uh, okay, add or remove your pods which are available there. Okay, so it will help you to modify the computing resources. Okay, uh, of an existing cluster. Okay, uh, okay, and uh, okay, then okay, and so on. Right, so that can be uh, now uh, uh, that can be that is what it is done. Okay, and so on. So uh, right, so that is what it will help you to provide. It. So that is nothing but is called as a. Uh, uh, Just a second. Horizontal pods will help you to add or remove your nodes. Okay, pods. Okay, uh, and also it will help you to remove your uh, uh, remove add or remove your nodes also. Remove your pods. So uh, remove your nodes. Sorry, okay. just remember this. So horizontal pods, 
the horizontal scale thing will help you to add or remove your bots uh, okay add add or remove your bots okay so vertical uh, vertical scaling what it will do is it will help you to adjust the cpu and memory reservation uh, for your bots okay and so on so that is what your vertical scaling will help you to do okay so that will help you to modify your cpu or your ram resources which is allocated to the pod or which is allocated to the node so that is nothing but is called as a very uh, vertical no, uh, no auto scaling, vertical auto scaling which is available there. So that is nothing but is your horizontal pod scaler, okay, and the vertical pod scaler which is available there, okay, and so on, all right, uh, uh, okay, uh, right. So that is nothing but is okay. So that is what happens here, okay. So you can auto scale it, okay, based on whether it is can be horizontal auto scaler. Horizontal auto scaler will remove your pods or remove your nodes. So that can be created. So that can also be no, you can create it which is available there, okay, and so on. Then comes your uh, okay uh, right. Then comes your networking options. Under networking options, you have services. You can create your services. Okay, you can create routes, ingress, network policies. All those things can be created here. And then you can provide a storage. Okay, you can provide a storage location. You can create your persistent volume. You can your persistent volume claims. Create your uh, storage classes. You can create a, no, you can create your volume volume snapshots. All those things can be content from the storage which is available there. Okay, and then you have builds, pipelines, monitoring tools. Okay, so alerting my metrics and dashboards. All those things can be done here. So if you click on alerting options, so this is your alerting options which is are available there. Okay, and these monitoring tools are based on your Prometheus stack. Okay, it is based on the Prometheus here stack which is available there. So if you click on alert, okay, it will take you to the uh, no, uh, uh, alert options which are available there. Okay, so you can just you know, click on this advanced. So it provides you with the alert manager which is available there. In the same way, in the same way, you can also click on the monitor, other monitoring tools which are available there. Okay. So if you come down, you have metrics and dashboards, okay, metrics. So if you click on you can just query using your Prometheus UI. Okay, if you want to Prometheus UI, you can go to Prometheus UI, then click on dashboards. You can you have the dashboards and you have the Grafana dashboards. So Grafana dashboards will help you to provide all the necessary no UI, okay, and so on. So this is your Red Hat OpenShift UI. So use your uh, same password in order to open your alert manager, okay. So this is your uh, right allow selected permissions. So all these things are alert can be uh, search filtered, okay. So you can check the status. Likewise, dashboard. You can if you click on Grafana, it will open your Grafana UI, which is available there. So. This monitoring tool is based on your, uh, what you call as, it's based on your uh, Prometheus stack, it Prometheus stack which is available there, okay. So this is your uh, Grafana dashboard which is available. There, okay, so right. So that is that is with your uh, um, monitoring tools which are available. There, okay. Then next comes your uh, compute options, right? Uh, related to your uh, nodes. Okay, how many nodes are available there? What are the different types of machines? So here, if you look into this, okay, right? Master one, master two, and master three. Okay, and then. The role of this particular machine is also it works also as a worker. It also works as a worker. So this scenario uh, can be based on a light. Okay, in a you now if you a learning environment or a testing testing environment, you can provide it. Okay, where the master and worker node are you know, are on the same system which is available. There. Okay, so when you look into the status, it says ready, and there is something called as scheduling is disabled. Okay, what do you mean by scheduling is disabled? Which means that, okay, that you the scheduler will not schedule a pod in this node that is master one node. Okay, so that is what it can schedule the pod in master two and master three. 
but it will not schedule the pause in your master one which is available there. So if you click on master, you will provide it gets you the additional details of this particular options are available there. Okay, and so on. So that is so that is okay. So that is nothing but is your notes which are available there. Okay, so now you have the machines. You have machine sets. All those things are available here. Okay, that is under compute and the last one is then you have the user management where you can create your users and groups all those things can be created. Okay, right. Uh, you can create a service accounts roles. Okay, role can be based on our role based access control RABC. Right, uh, right. And then you have the administrate where you will be able to you have you the cluster settings. Okay, what are the namespaces are available there. Okay, so what are the resource quotas namespaces are nothing but your projects. Okay. So in Kubernetes, we call it has namespace and in Red Hat OpenShift, we call it has projects. So namespace and projects inter then these two, no, uh, no, these two, no, jargons will interchange, right? So namespace is nothing but is your project. So these are the projects which are uh, uh, no, uh, uh, created. Okay, what are the resource quotas? Okay, all these things are your, no, uh, really under your uh, no, uh, uh, administration. These are your custom resource definition which is available there. So based on this, you, okay, your uh, custom resources are created, okay, authentication, build, okay, and so on. So that is nothing but is your, you uh, know, uh, uh, your uh, Red Hat OpenShift Red console which is there. So, uh, uh, so with your Red Hat OpenShift console, okay, you have this, uh, no, uh, no, the CLI is also available there, okay. So you have that particular, uh, no, uh, OpenShift command line interface is also available within this particular, okay, what is called as your uh, 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 OpenShift. Either you can make use of your kubectl or you can make use of this OpenShift CLI. OpenShift CLI can be made, make use of it. Okay. Okay. So then, uh, these are some of the uh, no, uh, tools which are available there. Okay. So which can be used with your Red Hat OpenShift container, so that you will be able to, no, uh, uh, okay, uh, build custom images using this particular tool. So we have Podman, we have Scopio, we have Builda. We have OCI runtime and run C, which is available there. Okay, so these are different tools which are available there, uh, which can be used in order to build your custom images. Right, the first one is nothing but is called as a pod man. The pod man is nothing but okay pod manager. It is nothing but is called as a pod manager. So this is an open source uh, tool for which will help you to develop, manage, and run your containers on your Linux environment on your. Linux environment which is available there. So that is nothing but is called as a uh, uh, on your Red Hat OpenShift. That is nothing but is called as a Podman. Okay. So the Podman is similar to your Docker, which is similar to your Docker. Okay, and so on, right? So this Podman will help you to manage your entire containers and also your container images which are available there. Then comes your Scopio. Scopio is a tool which will help you to move your container images different between different types of container storages okay so if you want to move an image from one container storage to another container or storage you can make use of the scopio tool which is available there okay then you have a builder tool this builder tool can be used in order to build your container images okay uh, either using your command line or by using your docker files which is available okay which is available so you can make use of this the last time, last one is nothing but is called as an OCI runtime environment. OCI runtime environment, which is there. So this run C is nothing but it's an open container initiative runtime. Okay. So this run C is an is a command line client which will help you to run your containerized application. Okay, which will help you to run your containerized application based on the specification of your OCI. OCI is nothing but open container initiative. So that is nothing but is called as a run C. So that these are the different Red Hat container tools which are available there. So you have a Podman, you have a Scopio, you have a Builder, and you have your run C which is available there. Okay, so you can make use of it in order to build your images which are available there. Okay, so this is a small difference between your Docker and the Podman. Okay, so the Docker is a client-server architecture. The Podman is not a client-server architecture. This is available there. 
okay so when a, when you want to manage all the objects right images or containers or registry and so on okay it is managed by a docker daemon so the docker client sends a docker command okay and then you are able to manage that particular okay in objects which are available there so you when you issue a docker run command the docker daemon that it will receive this docker uh, run command and manage that particular objects within your docker host which is available there okay but podman does not have a docker daemon it does not have a daemon which is available there okay then podman will directly manage your images container kernels and so on okay and docker okay if you want to con if you want to uh, if you do want to convert an image to a you know or to a pod okay uh, like for example pod to be deployed to a uh kubernetes it is a you know kubesum task for us to do that but in podman we have an option of creating an image okay our container has a pod and then deploying that onto a onto a kubernetes or red hat open ship which is available there okay and so on right so right okay and so on so that is what it, okay that is what the small difference between this but all the commands are similar okay when i say docker run okay in podman is podman run okay when i say docker pull here you say podman pull so these things are little uh, similar commands are a little similar which is available there so that is a you no know, small difference between your uh, podman okay and your uh, okay uh, and your uh, uh, docker okay and so on so the docker utilizes your client server architecture and this docker daemon is running persistently at the background okay so that it can manage the containers and also it can maintain the communication between the client and the server okay the podman manages a container okay uh, right uh, without using a, uh, a daemon docker uh, with, without using a daemon okay so podman is just a process podman is just a process it does not use a, a client server paradigm okay the client server architecture which is available there okay and so on right so the podman is the process okay uh, right and so on and uh, and the other like images containers or uh, registry all those things are your child processes okay child process which is available there okay and so on right so that is the small difference between your docker and the 